Uh, so first of all, hi to everyone. My name's James Grime. I'm a mathematician from the UK. I, I generally talk, you know, tour around, give talks about maths. I do videos about maths. And a few years ago, I made a video about non-transitive dice. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, non-transitive dice, they're a set, well, a set of three dice here. They haven't got the regular numbers on them, though. Uh, but the game is uh, you play an opponent, you each pick a die each, you roll them, whoever has the highest value wins. And the question is, which is the di best die to pick? If you do the maths, if you look at the probability, it turns out that red is a better choice than blue, has a better chance of winning. But in the same way, uh, blue is a better chance of winning than olive here. Uh, but the surprise is that olive is better than red, which means that the probabilities go round in a circle, kind of like an Escher staircase of probabilities. Uh, now, this was uh, written about by Martin Gardner in 1970. He wrote about a set of four non-transitive dice called F1 dice. But the idea is the same. No matter which die my opponent picks, I can pick one with a better chance of winning. But my question was, uh, can I devise a three-player game so I can beat two opponents at the same time? Uh, so this was my solution to that question. So I, desire, I devised a set of five dice. So we've got here red, blue, olive, yellow, and magenta. And you may notice there are two chains. So there's a circle going around the outside, and on the inside there is a pentagram chain. Uh, first question is, how can you remember the order of these chains? Uh, for the circle, uh, the order actually goes in, for the colors in order of word length. And for the pentagram, the order is in alphabetical order. And that is one night of my life spent just trying to work out the colors for these dice. But the really interesting part is if we now double the dice, so we're going to roll, say, blue, two blue dice, we use the total instead. If we double the dice, the pentagram chain stays the same, but the circle flips. It reverses order. So what was the circle of uh, victory on the left now becomes a circle of defeat. Uh, but the reason I do this is to make it a three-player game. So if I've got two opponents, and they, let's say they pick uh, olive and magenta, then I should pick blue, which means I can beat each person at the same time. If, on the other hand, my two opponents pick olive, uh, sorry, yellow and magenta, then I should pick red and a two-dice version of the game, which means you shouldn't volunteer your rules too early. But if you do that, you can beat each opponent at the same time. Uh, and then I wrote about this, and they became known as grime dice, which wasn't my idea, but it's all very nice. And then it got a little bit out of my control. Uh, so it became a real thing, which is amazing. Um, uh, when I, I made a video of me uh, seeing the real thing for the first time, look at my face. Look how delighted I am. This is the face of a pure mathematician who's made something real for the first time in his life. <laughs> and then it all got a little bit silly. Here are the grind dice juggling balls, and they all go very silly. Uh, and I felt very guilty about this because I am a massive fraud. Um, there is a problem with the original set, uh, which is this uh, probability here, the orange, sorry, the olive and red probability for two dice is a problem because the arrow actually goes in the wrong direction. It's very close to 50%. So I thought, well, I can get away with this as a game, but mathematically, it is going in the wrong direction. So I thought, can I fix this? Uh, so to cut a long story short, we ran a computer code program. We looked for a computer search, which was a difficult problem in itself because we're searching through all possible sets of five dice. But these are the conclusions. Um, the original set is the best set I could have found using single digits, values 0 to 9. So it's not like I missed something. Uh, but the first true set used values from 0 to 13, and they are rubbish. The probability is all really close to 50%. It would be a terrible game. So we continued looking. The best set we found used values from 0 to 17. After that point, the probabilities kind of plateaued. They didn't get any better. Uh, because I like to use single digits, here is that set written using values from minus 8 to 9. Here they are. <laughs> which we call Grime Dice 2 Die Harder. <laughs> Here are the probabilities. All the arrows are going in the correct direction. So to finish off, let me show you a game you can play using these dice. So it's a gambling game. You're playing two opponents. You're playing 100 rolls, let's say. 
Let's say if you win against an opponent, you win a dollar. If you lose, you lose a dollar. So either you're winning two dollars, you're losing two dollars, or you win one, lose one, which is a net loss of zero. You look at the probabilities. Uh, probability of beating both opponents is about 44%. Probability of losing to two opponents is about 23.5%. So the net profit on average is not zero, it's actually a net profit of $41 and possibly the loss of two former friends. <laughs> and I'll say thank you for now, thank you.